Alrighty, I'm back and we're going to finish coloring up the Dee Dee Wild Sprout from the Greeting Farm. And I'm going to be doing her clothes. I am also going to be doing a little bit of altering because I want to make her work for a Christmas type card. And so I am actually going to be replacing her top with this coat. Uh, from Wild Sprout Camille, also from the Greeting Farm. And the papers I chose, I got more scraps um, that I want to use up. So I picked these uh, pinks, and there's some reds and greens, and all the colors that I chose um, for the Copics that I'll be using on DD are meant to kind of coordinate with that. So that's kind of what I'm going for on this one. And I'm just going to start with um, her hair bows and boots because I want to do them both red and I'm going to be doing uh, R24 R24, R27, R29 with um, some E18 as well but I'm going to start with my lightest and I'm still always um, conscious, conscious of um, where I've established a light source coming from. So like on the last video I told you I have the light source coming from the right hand side. So I'm leaving my highlights on the clothes you know, to match that as well. And then, so I got some and I just always tend to leave white what I know I want to be my lightest shade of whatever the color is I'm working with um, at the very end. So at first it's going to be white, but we'll fill it in as we go. And then there. This is pretty close to that light source there. Okay. And then I'm going to be, we'll do her bows first. We'll take care of those. R27. I'm just you know, kind of right over top the R24, not quite as far in. Okay, R29. And that little crease there. Get some in this little crease there where it's tied in on itself. Okay. Now my E18 to really darken up the red. It makes it look nice and um, velvety, which I like for these Christmas cards. And it's just, I mean, with the very tip of the marker, we're not putting a whole lot on. Just in those dark shaded areas. Okay. Now I'm working my way back down. R29. Right over top the E18, pulling in. This is where we start filling in that white that we initially left um, without color. And this is where all the blending happens. That first uh, work up light to dark is basically just laying color on for me. And it's when I'm working my way back down, R27, that all the blending kind of starts happening. And you'll see that as we get these colors on here. Okay. And finish off with my R24. And that's just circle motion right there in the center, finally filling in that white. If you wanted a really strong gloss, on your bow, like if it was a satin ribbon, 
um, leave a little bit of the white showing and that will make it look shinier. Where I'm going more uh, for a soft velvety look, I'm coloring the entire thing in. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, balance out the red up top with some little red boots. So I'm going to take my R24 and get the color on here. I'm starting opposite that light source on both sides. That's why I have white on this side because the light's going to hit here first on that boot and it's going to hit on this side first on this boot. Now my R20, you know, uh, yeah, we'll do 27. I, yeah, as small as this is, you could probably skip the R27 I have, and it doesn't make a huge difference. You could go R24, R29, and a little bit of E18 and get a same, you know, similar look. It's not going to make a huge difference. Now my E18. And I'm just hitting back here. It's curving away back behind opposite that light source. Okay, now working my way back down. Now I like to pull towards the light. Like here, I'm going to skip the 27 and just fill in with the 24. And pull into that 29 not going as all the way back to the 18 because we want to keep that contrast back there okay so now while that dries I'm going to actually start working on her coat and I'm going to make it as close to this green as I can and to do that, I'm going to use this little clear block here. So I'm going to start with a coat of uh, YG21. And I'm going to get my color on here. And like this kind on her face, this is just getting that base coat of color on. It's a very uh, yellow, it's a yellow green to start with, but it's a very YG21, very yellow. Okay, now I'm going to go to YG23. And this is going to, I'm going to use this to define um, my shaded areas. Underneath her hood there, the side of that. So I'm going to pull this way a little bit. This one, ideally, someday, hopefully, um, Copic has a little yellow green color family that I don't know there I just don't have this perfect the YG 95 97 uh, are too gray um, for this and my uh, all the other ones don't quite hit this tone that is in a lot of the papers I use so it's kind of tricky to find combinations to try to mimic it so hopefully someday now I'm just going back to my YG21 and blending those two together. Someday, hopefully, I'll have a little color family set that will make this a lot easier. But in the meantime, I like a good challenge, so nothing wrong with that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do to try to get it closer to this without going too dark going to take my YG95 and I'm just going to put some ink on a clear block just any non-porous surface will work and then I'm going to take my YG21 
and I'm just going to, with the brush end tip, pick up that uh, 95 and start flicking it on. And this is a nice way to get a little bit of that darker color on without going too dark and too gray and muddying up um, the effect that I want to get. Because I want it, you know, this kind of olivey yellow green, but I don't want it as gray as the marker by itself would be. So by picking it up with the YG21, it blends out really nicely. And it's just a cool little trick. You can do this with a lot of different colors, not just this um, combination that I'm working with. But anytime you want to um, add a little bit of a darker tone um, subtly, I guess, compared to using it straight from the marker, this is a great way to go. Okay, and now just kind of blend that with the YG21 again. And you can see the difference doing that made on the coat. And we'll let that dry and we'll see if I need to go back in and eat, add any um, darker colors later. But before I leave that, I'm just going to hit that little um, shirt underneath the coat with some uh, BG23 and BG18. Oh, I gotta decide on her little... I'm gonna give her mittens too, so um, we'll go pink <coughs> with her mittens. I'm using R30 R32 and R35 for our darkest for the contrast and just a hint of that and quickly blend it in with the 32 and I'm being kind of messy because I'm going to be cutting that out obviously to put on Dee Dee so I'm not worrying about staying in the lines completely but okay so now back to Dee Dee and all I have to do is add um, some blue greens and I'm going to make her tight blue green with the BG23 and the BG18 and then the G00 just to kind of lighten it up. Okay, and we'll use our same pink we did on the mittens for her little bloomers there. So I'm getting my R30 on. And my light source is coming here, so that's why I'm leaving the little white there, a little white there to fill in later. And again, I'm not worrying about the shirt because that's actually going to get covered up mostly by the coat that we're going to put on her. And R35. And work our way back down with the 32. And the 30 from this direction. Okay. I gotta decide. Oh, we'll probably go with some green on her boots. So we'll get just our YG21. Our YG23 back here on the shadow. And do our same little trick. Get some of the YG95 on the block and pick it up with our 21. And kind of go over the whole thing. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> now, is our coat looking pretty ready? It's looking good. I want to, I think I will take the YG95 and just um, do this pocket here to give us a fun little accent on her coat. We won't do any blending on that, but that's all we need there. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut that out. That's a nice thing. I keep saying it, you know, these greeting farm images where, you know, they're all kind of in the same size, especially when you're working in the same range with all the sprouts and stuff. Um, so it makes them very easy to kind of swap out clothes between them and create all new uh, looking characters for different types of cards that you want to be making. Um, it really adds to the versatility of them when you kind of build your little collection. This is not the first time that I've used Camille's coat on another character. I just, it's so cute for a little winter Christmas looking character. And so that is going to go, wow, it's going to cover up most of her little shorts. I didn't realize it'd be going that long. Okay, well, that's good to know. I didn't even need to bother with the pink down there. Anyway, we will glue that on. I'll just use a little glue pen. Line that right up underneath her chin. Now, when I go to cut that out, I'm just cutting away any of the body that shows up from the original Dee Dee. So we've kind of changed the way her arms are in the process of adding that coat on. So you can see how it's starting to look. See? Now she's starting to look like a little winter girl. I think that's where I'm going to end this video since I've already done a fussy cutting one, but I'll finish cutting her out and putting her on a card, and I think that'll be a fun one to do. So thanks for the suggestion to Hoot and Holla. I uh, hope you liked seeing Dee Dee all colored up, and thanks to everyone else for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.